The second weapon that God is going to give to us today, which I'm going, I want us to press on to, is the power of love. Amen. Someone say the power of love. The power of love. Oh, say, say the power of love. The power of love. By the Spirit of God, you're going to see what is in the power of love right now. There are three powerful forces of success in the world. The Bible calls them faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them is love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Those are the three powerful forces of success in life. Now abide it, they stand strong. What? Faith, hope, and charity. Another translation calls it charity. The King James calls it charity. That word charity is love. But the greatest of it is what? Love. Love is the strongest, is the strongest of the weapon. Thank God for faith, but even faith works by love. Without love, faith cannot work. Hello, somebody. Amen. That's Galatians chapter 5. There's a scripture that says, Faith walketh by love. But without, so, but love is the strongest. Love is powerful. Love is a very powerful weapon. You can defeat or, you know, overcome many things by love, by the weapon of love. Why is love powerful? Because love is of God. Amen. I said love is of God. Amen. First John chapter six, I mean chapter four, verse seven, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So when you begin to you, when you love, it means you are born of God. And don't forget, so whatever is born of God, what overcomes the world? Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. First John 5, 4. You don't have to turn to that. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So love is of God. And the Bible also says in verse 16, and we know and believe the love of God, the love that God has for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Somebody say God is love. God is I want to show you why love is powerful. God is love. So if God if God is love, then love must be powerful because God is powerful. Amen. The Bible says in Jeremiah 32 verse 17, it says, I am the Lord. Jeremiah 32 verse 27. It says, I am the Lord. Is there anything too hard for me? I am the Lord. I am the Lord. <laughs> so God is love. Amen. And God is saying the love Love is saying, so when we say God, we can say love is saying because God is love. Mm -hmm. Love is saying, is there anything too or too hard for me? Mm -hmm. So love, there, will, there is nothing that is too hard for God. So because God is love, nothing is too hard when love of God is in place. Amen. Are you hearing what God is saying? Yes, he yes. said, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Mm -hmm. Who is this God that he's talking about? The God who is love. So no difficulty, no challenge, no obstacle that he cannot handle. Amen. Is there anything too hard for me? Mm. In Jeremiah 32 verse 17, the same scripture, it says, Thou art Lord, nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. It says, Behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by what your great power and stretch out arm. There is nothing too hard for you. So there is nothing too hard for God. And God is love. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. In, in Genesis 18 and verse number 14, he said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? So nothing is too hard for the Lord. Nothing is too hard for love to accomplish. So as you journey through life, Nothing can resist the potency of the love power Amen. of God, which we have in Christ. Nothing can resist. Nothing can, uh, nothing can uh, stand before the potency uh, power of the love of God, which we have in Christ. That's why it said in Romans 8, verse 35 to uh, 37 to 39, it said, What shall separate us? 
what shall be able to stop the work of love in our life? Shall tribulation, so troubles, trials, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. He said, none of these things shall be able to stop the love power. None. Tribulation, distress, you know, persecution, nakedness, peril, sword, cannot withstand the love power of God. He said, nay, in all these things, we are what more than conquerors. True God that loves us. When love is at work in our lives, we conquer. We are not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Love is powerful. Please pay attention to what God is saying because I want you to see this. I'm going to show you by the Spirit of God something very powerful. I'm just telling you now how what makes love powerful. God is love. Love is powerful because God is love and God is powerful. Hello, somebody. Amen. And nothing shall be able to separate or withstand the love power of God. Nothing. Amen. In all these things, it says, not even, the, not, not, not even angels, not principalities, not powers, not things present, not things you know, to come, neither nor heights, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to withstand the love power of God, which is in Christ Jesus, which we have in him. So when God's love is at work in a person's life, there is nothing that can resist or hinder that person. Amen. So once you are filled with the love power of God, you are unstoppable. Amen. Once we are filled with the love power, because you see, a lot of people don't understand the power of love. Love is a weapon. It's a powerful, potent weapon that God is arming us with. You know, when, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they are going to the promised land. In Psalm 1, 114 from verse 1 to 6, the Bible says, love, which is God, was in the midst of them. God was in their midst. God is a Jew that was his sanctuary. Israel was his dominion. The sea saw it and what and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains they skip like ram and the hills like little lambs. And somebody's asking, what's making mountains to fly? What's making uh, uh, the hills to skip? What's making the Red Sea to part? And he says, tremble at the presence of the Lord, the God of Jacob. So who, who is this God? The love God was in their midst. God who is love was in their midst. Are you watching something this Amen. morning? God who is love was in their midst. So it was love that was working, that was carrying them. What took them out of Egypt was the love of God. Mm. Hello, somebody. Amen. I said it was the love of God that mm. took them out of Egypt. Mm. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, from verse number, uh, let's see this scripture, from verse 6 to 8. Deuteronomy 7, 6 to 8. The Bible says, The Lord, for thou art a holy people unto the Lord. For the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be what? A special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love, you see that, upon you because you are more in number than any people. For what? You are the fewest. So, I'm saying to all by the Spirit of God, what brought them out was the love of God that was set on them. The love of God that was strong on them, that was in their midst. He said, because, that, because the Lord loved you, he brought them out because of his love. It was love that made God to bring them out of Egypt. It was love that made it impossible for Pharaoh to stop them. It was love that made the Red Sea to part. It was love at work. Love is powerful. Amen. That love of God was what redeemed them. Amen. That love of God is also what, redeemed, what has redeemed us. Yes. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should never amen. suffer loss. Amen. Never be defeated. Never be hindered. Amen. So love is powerful. Yes, sir. 
Can I hear amen? amen? Yeah. So the sea saw God. What was God doing in their midst? What kept God in their midst? Was the love that he had that made him to follow them that the sea saw him and gave way. The mountains keep like ram because of the love factor. Yes. And the Bible says, watch this. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not even entered the heart of men what God has reserved for those who love him and for those whom he loves. Amen. Yes. Love is very powerful. Yes, sir. Eyes have not seen. Mm. Ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of men what God has reserved for those who love him. Amen. And the Bible says, all things work together for the good of those who love God. All things. How many things? All oh. things will work together for the good of the person who love God. Amen. Because God is love. So you see, God has set his love on us. We also need to love God. Our love, you see, the commandment, this is what you want me to get to. Maybe I should go back up and come back to the phone. <laughs> the love, the commandment, when it says, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. It's not a commandment of uh, bondage. It's a commandment of empowerment. Amen. Matthew 22, verse, 30, verse, verse 30, 37. That's the greatest commandment. It says, Thou shalt what? love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. When you love God the way God loves you, you have brought power into your life that will give you victory as you march on. Because once you begin to love, say all things will work together for your good because you love God. Amen. All things, somebody say all things, all will things. work together for your good because you love God. And say eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it has not even entered the heart of men what God has reserved for them that love him. Yeah. So when we embrace that commandment to love the Lord our God with all our heart, we are bringing the power of God, the fullness of God into our life. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, the Bible says, For this cause I bow my knees. You can start from verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant unto you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in your inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart, what? Faith. By faith, that you be rooted and grounded, what? In love. Wow. So what we need to be rooted in? We need to be rooted and grounded in love to be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, what? Which passes knowledge. That what? He might, ye might be filled, what? With all the what? Fullness of God. What makes us get filled with all the fullness of God is what? Love. Once you love God, you'll be filled with all the fullness. That means God's might, God's wisdom, God's power, God's ability, God's sensitivity. We fill our lives. And when you are filled with all the fullness of God, what, what can stop you? Nothing. <laughs> oh, you are not even hearing what the Holy Spirit yes, saying. Sir. Are you in church? Yes. Listen, you see, you, you see, understanding is the key. Mm -hmm. Understanding is the key. So your most potent power, like I said, the greatest uh, uh, weapon of success is love. Mm -hmm. Love of God will make you successful in your life. Amen. It will make you unstoppable. Amen. It will make all things to work together for your good. Amen. It will make the rest see to part on your behalf. Amen. It, will, it will make the hills to skip. Amen. Because once you are filled with God, when you are filled with His love, you are filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. And when you are filled with all the fullness of God, there is no obstacle, no barrier, nothing you desire as you Amen. journey in life. That will not you will not get. Amen. That's the goal of the commandment. Amen. 
May you be filled with Amen. a fresh baptism of the love of God. Amen. Many, that's your weapon. You see, when you are filled with the love of God, when the love of God fills you, your love fills God's heart. Amen. Then you become the apple of his eyes. That's why I say, because of the glory, for those say the Lord, because of the glory, after the glory, have I sent you to the nations. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 8. Because of the glory, have I, after the glory have I sent you to the nation, he that touches you, what? Touches the apple of my eye. You see, no matter who it is, no matter how you respect a person, when a person begins to put his hand to try to put into your eye, no matter how quiet you are, how gentle, you may be as a person. You're going to turn that hand somewhere. You're going to bend that finger. You will never allow anything to touch your eye. Hmm. Hello, somebody. Amen. Oh, yeah. People will fight to defend their eye. Amen. God says, when you, love, when, when you love him, you're going to become what? The apple of his eye. And that tells me you're going to be victorious in everything that you do. So love is power. Somebody say love power. Love power. Oh, you are not saying like you really come. Love, say, love, love power. Say, say love. Say God is love, love and is God love. is power. And God, is and power. God manifests himself as power Amen. when he feels all in all. He feels like all the fullness of God comes on display when love is involved. Amen. The depth, the breadth, the height of God mm. comes on display when love is involved. Amen. That's why he said in Jeremiah 31 verse 3, he says, the Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying what? I have loved thee, what? With an everlasting love. And therefore with loving kindness have I drawn you. What God, he said, I have loved you, what? With an everlasting love. When you love God with all your heart, all your mind, you're going to have eternal triumph. Amen. Oh yeah. You're going to have continuous victory. And your victory might not be even, people might not know why you are victorious. Right. Because you are a lover. Can I just shock you for a minute? Mm -hmm. One person who never lost any battle in his life was David. Mm -hmm. And who was David? David was a man after God's own heart. David, David was a man that said, I love you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I love. Back in Psalm, David began to talk about his love relationship with God. Amen. That's why he was victorious. Mm -hmm. Even as a young guy, he defeated the mighty giant mm -hmm. that was in the land. You are about to bring down the Amen. giants standing before you. Amen. Whether they are financial giant, material giant, Amen. physical giant, Amen. emotional giant, you're going to defeat them all. Amen. Once you are filled with the love of God, that's why you have to just cultivate your love for God. Yes, sir. That's why I say you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You know, if you want to be, as you match, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. It's, it's a fact. Maybe I will say it's an invisible weapon. It's an invisible weapon. That love is feeling your heart. You are in love with God. The love of God is, you know, in fact, Paul said, the love of God constrains me. It, it pours me on. It steers me. Even Paul was a lover of God. Most lovers of God are always successful. That's why they couldn't keep on. He said, the love of God constrains me. It fills me. It turns me on. I'm in love with him. Yeah, they beat him 40 stripes. How many stripes? Many shipwrecks. Everything. He was victorious. They couldn't bring him down because of his love for God. May you be may, may there be a baptism. What you need to that so it's a weapon. Love for God is a weapon. It's the weapon of our warfare. They are not carnal. Amen. They are spiritual. It's a spiritual weapon. Love is a spiritual weapon. Amen. Yes, that can disarm the devil. Mm -hmm. Can I shock you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bible says in First John chapter number four, verse 16. One of the greatest uh, tricks or skills of the devil 
is fear. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, there is no fear in love. Amen. There is what? No fear yeah. in love. For perfect love casted out what? Oh. Fear. All fear. It casted out fear. Mm -hmm. There is no fear in love. First John mm -hmm. chapter 4. I mean, where are you? Uh, four, verse, verse, verse 18. It says what? There is no fear in love. Amen. There is what? No fear. In One of the greatest uh, uh, what's it called? Schemes of the devil is fear. Yes, sir. I'm going to teach us how, how, we're going to, how you can overcome it. Yeah. Fear. But there is no fear. When there is love, when you, you know, when, when you love God, you know, many people don't understand. When you love God and you know that God loves you, anywhere you are going, you, are, you have this kind of confidence that all things will work together for your good. Amen. Even the one you don't know. Yes, sir. You don't, you don't scheme. Hmm. You, don't, you, don't, you don't struggle. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. what, brought, what brought Goliath's head? When David confronted him, was his love for God. People were people, people were afraid to die. Mm. Even though God's name was being, you know, ridiculed, was being uh, despised. David said he would rather die mm. than to see the name of his lover being trashed. Mm. He was love that moved David to fight Goliath. Love for God. And he won. Mm. David was so much in love with God, he believed in the sovereignty of God. It wasn't in their father's house. People were scheming to, uh, maybe on, their, in, on job, people were trying to, you know, play favoritism or rather. He was in the desert. He didn't even mind what was happening in the house. In the house, He was there just doing what he wanted to do, doing what he needed to do. He, that's why he was composing love songs to God. All the while in the desert, people in his house, this one was trying to be the elder, this one was trying to be. David was there just singing love songs to God. When they came to look for a king, none of them in the house qualified. The lover of God was the one they went to look for. Amen. When, you are, when you are filled with the love of God, anywhere you yes, are, Lord. they will find you out. Amen. And they, the heights that God will take you, yes, nobody Lord. can ever uh, be able to imagine. Amen. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ that you're going to have a fresh baptism. Amen. This is a weapon. This is the power of love. May you be filled with this power of love, Amen. intoxicating love for God. Amen. That God fills you. That means once you, once you are filled with the love of God, you are filled with all the fullness of God. It takes love to be filled with the fullness of God. He said, even if you speak in tongues, it doesn't change anything. You speak of prophecy, it doesn't move anything. He said, you are not. He said, but once you are filled with love, you are filled with all the fullness of God. Perfect love casted out fear. Yeah. And fear is the Satan's, you know, uh, first, uh, what I call it? He's a miser that is sent to people. Once that I want to, read, to, to trap people, the first thing he said is fear. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Hey! Fear has entered. Mm -hmm. You want to take a step? Hey! Fear. Once fear comes, <laughs> you are already defeated. Amen. But once you know that you are a lover of God, yes, that's why David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. My lover is with me. My lover, the God I love is with me. There is no fear in love. Amen. There is no fear. May you be rid from every tormenting fear. Amen. Because fear has torment. A whole lot of people are tormented by fear. Amen. In the name of Jesus, be free from the torment of fear. Amen. By your love, by cultivating love for God. Yes, Lord. Hot, passionate love, Amen. affection for God. That's what they say. I have set my love, my affection on my God. It's, it's, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, I receive grace. Lord, I receive grace. For baptism. For the baptism. 
of the spirit of, of love. The spirit of love. Love for you. Love for you. Say, I receive grace, I receive grace to, love you to love you with all my heart, with all my, heart, with all my, soul, with all my soul, with all my mind. All my mind. Yeah. In the to be in love with God is your weapon against the devil. Yeah. <laughs> God's lovers are victorious. Yeah, that's why I say God is love. But whatever is born of God is born of love. Amen. So how come we are born of love and we begin to live in hate? Hmm. Or we can't even have the capacity for love. We don't even love God. That's why many people are divided. Because there's no love of God in their hearts. But you are going to become victorious Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. That instrument of the enemy will no longer be able to work on Amen. you. Amen. Yeah. The love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So what the Holy Ghost even comes to do is to spread love, spread love in our heart. The Holy Spirit is not just for tongue. The Holy Spirit is given to us to fill our hearts with love of God. Amen. Yeah, Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God is spread abroad in our hearts by what? The Holy Ghost. Yeah. You see... When somebody is in love, you, see, you can't even when, you, when somebody is in love, you can't even tell. You can't. I mean, you, don't, you, you can't. You, it, because love is not. That's a. It's a spiritual weapon. It's not like something that someone can easily see. Hello, somebody. Amen. Oh yeah. You, maybe you can't easily see that somebody is in love. Mm. But when the person is in love, you'll be doing things that only lovers can do. <laughs> oh yeah. Be doing things. It's by the things that the person is doing. Say, oh, this person loves this person. This person loves this person. And that will be the key. God, just love for God. People, some people love things. Amen. <laughs> many people don't love. So, I won't say many people. A whole lot of people, even in the church, don't love God. They love things or they love the things they can get from God. Amen. But once you love God, God will, f you're going to be filled with all his fullness. Amen. And God knows those who love him. Yes, sir. God knows those who love him. So the person you need to show that you love is God. And that's a weapon. Yes, sir. It's a weapon. Let me